Baruch HaMaboyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. Um, tonight's lecture will be on uh, a topic I think that people have heard about, Jacob's Ladder, which is mentioned in the Torah. So there's a story told in the book of Genesis, <coughs> excuse me, in the portion of Ayetze. After Yaakov takes his older brother's blessing, well, he is forced to leave his home and Rivka, his mother, is told through divine prophecy that Esav is very angry in contemplating murdering his younger brother. So both, because of his mother's concern and following his father's, father's instruction to get married, Yaakov is on his way to Uncle Lovin's house in Kharun, which today would be in modern-day Iraq, to find a wife. On the way there, he realized that he did not stop off at the place that both his father and grandfather had prayed at when they had traveled. And so he retraces his steps and prays, and then afterwards he spends the night there, sleeping at the site of the temple. Now, during the night he has a dream. In the dream, he sees angelic figures going up and coming down a ladder. The ladder has its base on the ground and its top reaches up to the heavens. His vision has many different meanings that we may discuss. So the first question that we ask is, why a ladder? Why a ladder to heaven? Why not, as the title to the famous song by the rock, rock group, Led Zeppelin, a stairway to heaven? I think that the answer to this question gives us some deeper insight into our mission in this world. You know, a ladder is something that allows us to climb higher than we were able to do by ourselves. It functions as an apparatus for one person to elevate themselves one rung at a time. Now, trying to climb more than one rung of a ladder at a time could be dangerous. This is in contrast to stairs. Stairs allow many people to ascend and descend all at the same time, with little or no difficulty. If you are in good shape, physical shape, you may even be able to climb two or even three stairs in one stride. Now, a ladder may also be an allusion to our entrance, our exit, and our overall journey in this world. We enter this world alone, and we also leave this world alone. There may be others on the same ladder, but they are not with, with us on the same rung at the same time. When we have both feet on a rung, we feel secure. When we lift our foot to move in either direction, up or down, there may be a feeling of insecurity. When our foot is in the air traveling from one rung to another, it is many times hard to ascertain whether we are going up or whether we are coming down. It is not until our foot rests securely on the next rung that we actually know whether we have moved forwards or whether we have moved backwards. In life, we are not given the opportunity to stand on one rung for too long. We are forced to keep moving in one direction or another. We need to focus, stay in the moment. Then we don't have to deal with our insecurities. We can dictate to the moment rather than have the moment dictate to us and move up rather than down our ladder. You know, the verse in the Torah that mentions the angels that Yaakov sees in his dream describes them as olim fiordim, going up and coming down. So Rashi explains that the angels that had accompanied Yaakov while he was outside the land of Israel were leaving him, and the angels that would accompany him in the land of Israel were now coming down. I think there's a great symbolism that's found here. Many times when we begin a project, uh, such as when we become Bali Chuvo, we are, are filled with passion and enthusiasm. We experience what we might call an aliyah, an ascent in our body and our mind. But then reality sets in, and we may find ourselves over time, somehow the torch that we lit has become a candle. It is essential, essential that we do not become despondent. We need to know that though we may only be a candle, a candle that burns brightly can eat up a lot of darkness. In fact, we need to see it as an opportunity for growth. Taking a step backwards is not always a negative. When you bend down, it allows you to jump much higher than you would have been able to do otherwise. Always remember in life that life is a ladder and we should always try to climb higher and higher, 
if we sleep, if we slip, <clears throat> we can always regroup and continue our climb uh, with greater care and determination than before. I always quote the saying that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. Our rabbis tell us that the ladder was on a slant with the bottom of the ladder in Be'er Sheva and the top of the ladder in Betel. The middle part of the ladder was parallel with the place where the temple would be built. The Maral of Prague asks, why was the ladder on a slant? After all, the message about the angels going up and coming down would have been the same, whether the ladder was straight or whether it was slanted. The Maral answers that each rung of the ladder alludes to a higher level of Torah and spirituality. When the rungs are straight, it reflects a higher level, but not necessarily a distinct one. Since all the rungs are in the same line, none are any different from each other, only higher. However, when the ladder is on a slant, ah, then each rung has its own plane, distinct from any other, not only in height, but also in position. And so too, Torah and spirituality. As one grows, they become a totally new person. So much so that they cannot even be compared to anyone who is not on their level of Torah and mitzvot. Our rabbis tell us that anyone who is not on the same spiritual plane as a Talmud Chacham, as a Torah scholar, cannot comprehend his elevated position. Also, when a ladder stands straight, straight up, each rung sees the rung above it allowing the lower rung to appreciate the difference between them. However, when the ladder is on a slant, the lower rung cannot see anything above itself. It therefore cannot acknowledge anything else that is above it. And so too many unlearned Jews who have not studied or had the opportunity to perceive the beauty and depth of Torah cannot truly appreciate those who have mastered the depths of Torah and its hidden mysteries based on opinion of the Torah. Now, Yaakov's ladder is seen in the vision of the night, as the verse in Vayetze states. And it says that he dreamt, and behold, the ladder was set on the ground, and the top of it was reaching up to the heaven, and there were angels of God ascending and descending on it. Uh, from a person's dreams, we can learn a great deal about the person. Paro's dreams were about cows, Yaakov's about heaven. We read in this portion that Yaakov had two dreams here with the angels and the ladder, reaching up to the heavens. And again, when he was living with Lovin, where he dreamt about spotted sheep. Now, we do see a difference between these two dreams. When he was at the site of the temple, he dreamt about angels. And when he was in Lovin's house, he dreamt about sheep. So one can see that the place where a person resides can have a strong influence upon one's thoughts. This can also be true on a temporary basis, as the Talmud teaches us. Walk into a perfume shop and buy nothing, still you walk out smelling better. A ladder allows us to go up or come down, and so too in life. A person has the ability to rise or fall. It's all dependent upon how they live, based on a Chafetz Chaim. From here we see that the prayers of the righteous are ladders for the angels. We also learn about the concept of what we call Hashkacha Pratis, divine providence, administered personally by God Almighty himself. This was the idea conveyed to Yaakov, our father, in his dream. Now, the Hebrew word for sulam, the latter, connects to many different ideas through the spelling of the word and through its gematria, through its numerical value. Now, the Hebrew word sulam, spelled with I vav, pardon, without a vav, <clears throat> has a numerical value of 130. The same numerical value as the Hebrew word Sinai, again, 130. God showed Yaakov a vision of the children of Israel receiving the Torah on Har Sinai and Mount Sinai. In addition, the word Sulam without a vav is an illusion that through a person's good deeds, they can merit a ladder that reaches up to the heaven. Now, if one adds a vav, numerical value of six, to the word, then the numerical value is 136, the same as the Hebrew word anav, again, poverty. Our sages tell us the one who worries about his own pockets merits poverty, based on a balaturim. If one will move the letters of the Hebrew word sulam around, 
it would spell the word Samal, the devil, but without the letter Aleph. When you focus on your ego alluded to by adding the letter Aleph, numerical value of one, then the word Samal is spelled complete, giving one's evil inclination full power. Now the latter is anchored below here on earth, which alludes to the side of evil, which focuses on materialism. However, a person can overcome his evil inclination and focus on spirituality. Then they have the ability and possibility to reach to the heavens. You know, in the high holiday prayers, we recite the words tshuva, repentance, tefillah, prayer, utzedaka, and charity, ma'vir and nisroon hagazer, remove the evil judgment. Now, printed above these three words, in smaller print, are the Hebrew words mamon, money, kol, prayer, and tzom, fasting. The prayer mentions these three concepts of giving charity, praying, and fasting, since they are all righteous actions which allow our sins to be forgiven during this propitious time of the year. These three words, mamon, kol, and tzom, all have a gematria numerical value of 136. Now, when God created this world, he did so through 10 character traits that he took upon himself. Three of these traits are intellectual. Chachma, intellect, Bina, understanding, and Dat, wisdom. The other seven traits are emotional traits. Six are masculine. Chesed, kindness, Gevura, severity. Teferis, beauty, Netzach, victories, Hod, splendor, and Yesod, foundation. Then there is one feminine trait, Malchut, kingship. The question that one has to ask is, how do we know that these three traits, charity, prayer, and fasting, will actually bring about a positive verdict on our day of judgment? And that is the question really asked by the Tom, the simple son in the Passover Haggadah. His question is phrased as, Mazot, how can I be certain that God will forgive my sins? The numerical value of the Hebrew word zot is 408. Now, 408 is the sum total of the three acts we employ to bring about our forgiveness. Each one of these acts has a numerical value of 136. Again, the coal, mum and coal and tome. Three times 136 is 408. The same numerical value as the Hebrew word zot. So we answer the simple sun, and we say the proof is that our ancestors in Egypt perform all three of these actions, and they were redeemed from slavery. The Torah tells us they cried out to God, Kol, prayer, which connects to it. They experienced an oppressive slavery, which connects to Psalm, fasting. And here, instead of giving charity, they were asked by God to request gold and silver from their Egyptian neighbors, again, which connects to the concept of mummon, money. The verse then concludes with the words that with a mighty hand, God brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So we see that these actions do have the power to bring about forgiveness and our salvation. Now the Hebrew word sulam ladder, like the Hebrew word mamon, money, both have numerical value of 136. Money, like the ladder in Yaakov's dream, can bring one up to the highest spiritual heights or down to the lowest depths of depravity. It's all up to you, based on a good word. The Holy Baal Shem Tov stated that in reality, money is nothing, and therefore it is connected to the ground. But if a person is able to use their money properly, then it can help his rosh, his head, the place where the neshama, the divinity of God, resides in one's body, again, to reach the heavens above. Our Mayor Pramish Lan said to God, that if you look at all the prayers of the children of Israel, you will see they're all about money. But if they have money, then they will be able to do more mitzvot based on a pun of Yophos. We are by our very natures, earthbound creatures. Most of our goals and efforts are connected to earthly needs and desires. What Yaakov's dream with the latter is telling us is that the true essence of man is to reach for the heavens, spirituality. However, before we can reach for the heavens, we must first possess a ladder. Then we must check that it is planted securely on the earth. Then this ladder can allow us to climb higher and higher, 
with no fear of falling. Now the beauty of a ladder is that it is portable, whereas stairs are fixed. This teaches us that we can reach the heavens anywhere and at any time by climbing our spiritual ladder, based on a concept of Rabbi Silverberg. There's a saying in the Medjish Rabbah in Vayikra, Derech Eretz Kodma Torah. Proper civil conduct, conduct precedes Torah obligations. Meaning that before one can reach for the heaven spirituality, they must first be firmly anchored on the earth through Torah values. God wants us to create a residence for him in this physical world. We, on the other hand, strive to create a residence for ourselves in heaven. Once we are properly rooted in this world, then we can hopefully elevate this material world to the level of holy. And this is what the latter symbolizes. Our journey in this world of trying to bring earth closer to heaven. We also learn how we should conduct ourselves in our relations with God and with man in general. Derek Heretz, the way of the earth. People constantly tread on the earth, and yet it never complains. It has no ego. We should follow this example. The road to heaven is paved with humility. Now the ladder that we climb in this world is the Torah with its 613 rungs. With every rung that we climb, we come closer and closer to fulfilling our mission in life and reaching our final destination with the coming of Mashiach Sukeno quickly and in our time. And with that, we finished our topic. And again, I hope you found it interesting. Um, let me uh, again thank you for attending. Let me wish you a uh, happy week, a safe week, a healthy week. And again, God should bless you with all that's good. Uh, again, tomorrow will be Thanksgiving. It's interesting that the Gentile world has Thanksgiving once a, once a year. We have Thanksgiving three times a day, every time that we pray. Uh, that's all what a Jew is all about. Again, the word Yehuda is for th the word thanks, a course of gratitude. And we also wish you a happy Hanukkah. Again, keep the lights burning. And God should bless you with only good. Thank you very much for attending.